we have Maddie and Dan from the Callous Cowboys, one of our new, like more newer favorite bands right now. They are just like absolutely killing it. It's so cool to see the Callous Cowboys kind of like really pop off over the last couple of years. Uh, it's just uh, it's got to be a really exciting time um, for the band. Um, so anyway, we're really excited to chat uh, a little bit more about your guys' history, all the things you guys got going on here soon. Um, but yeah, with that said, how are you doing, Maddie? And how are you doing, Dan? I'm doing well. I'm awesome. We're we're stoked. We're about to leave for Europe in a few days, so we've all been a little crazy because mm-hmm. of that, but it's exciting. So that's how I'm doing. Yeah. How about you, Dan? You're in the middle of literally driving right now, uh, <laughs> getting prepared to go to Europe. But yeah, how are you doing, Dan? Oh, oh, he might oh. Be. oh. Dan, we're, to- we're totally fine. On us. He's drinking Dang. and driving. There we go. Oh no. <laughs> Well, Maddie, let's uh, yeah. let's start with you. Um, since I, sure. so, I know Dan is one of the more newer members of Cal mm-hmm. Style Boys, uh, and I know you've been around for a little bit longer. Yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of how the Cal Style Boys like got together? Uh, kind of what's the whole history? I know there's been a number of like lineup changes, even in the few short years the band's been around. But yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of those early days and just kind of the brief history of the Cal Style Boys? Yeah, sure. Um, so. Carson and I met when, uh, our vocalist, Carson, um, him and I met when we were like seniors in high school, I think, okay. um, through a, a Christian coffee shops, karaoke and DJ night that oh, was yeah. going on <laughs> in, <laughs> in, my small, yeah, in my small town that I'm from. Um, Carson grew up like the next town over and we just happened to have like a mutual friend that uh, she was just like, the two of y'all have all the same music in common, so you need to meet. Um, but anyways, Carson and I started uh, an emo band <laughs> originally that um, didn't really go anywhere, but uh, he taught me how to play guitar just so we could be in bands together, basically. And um, yeah, we had we had this emo band for like two-ish years and just played around Atlanta, like put out a couple EPs, didn't really like do a ton with it. And then... Um, we started Dow Boys with another member of that band was a part of the original lineup. And then, um, a couple of other friends, um, including our violinist and keyboardist now, Amber, um, we started Dow Boys kind of just as like a, it was supposed to be like a joke. (laughs) I I would imagine with a name like the Callous Dow Boys that it would be a joke. Yeah, we, um, it was Carson's first time, like really doing like, vocals and he really wanted an outlet for that um i gotta be honest i did not like most metal or like metalcore or hardcore when we started the band um and i was just like yeah this will be this is funny like we were just like we we're trying to play like the most upsetting and loud and like chaotic music <laughs> as our abilities allowed us to at the time which was not <laughs> not a ton when we first started but um yeah we were the original goal was we wanted to get onto uh booked with country bands and we wanted to advertise ourselves as a country band and then go there and play like (laughs) the most fucked up music that we could but you uh, know that's been like a lifelong dream of mine like i've I've always wanted to like come out with like a country album yeah and like do it completely straight like uh like like a typical country artist would and then like the next album just have it be like the most like raucous ridiculous metal music possible so i gain all these like weird ass country fans yeah to like and then alienate them right away you know i think that'd be hilarious (laughs) i wish there was more crossover in those like there should be right there should be it's like country music is uh it's gotten so stale and like it it won't take any risks and i wish there was more of a market out there but i think i'm probably in the very small market that would enjoy that but uh is is southern metal would that be considered like country metal then i, it, I don't know it's a stretch i think i it's, always wondered yeah yeah like i don't think it's that far off but like i think a lot of butt metal gets into territories like that and stuff mm-hmm. too it does mm-hmm. um well that's because like the product the production's basically the exact same now Oh yeah, totally. I mean, like, like well, the way the way they do vocals, especially. Yeah, uh, country production has like gone down the toilet. That's like a totally uh, you could I'm on a rant on totally. this because, like, <laughs> I'm a big fan of like old school country music and like the way that it's made now is like 
they no they don't hardly track a real drum or like a real guitar through yeah. an amp or nothing like yeah but anyways yeah we uh, uh <laughs> i i do have to ask this mm -hmm. you know you said it was a christian karaoke coffee house it was, thing it was right? a christian coffee shop that was like for teenagers and uh it was like right beside so they were doing karaoke yeah they had like a they would have like a karaoke night um carson and i did like within five minutes of meeting each other we did beverly hills by weezer oh wow you're allowed to listen that's the question i wanted to hear that's secular bands were allowed there that's a shame. yeah it, it, it had to be like clean and pg and whatever they weren't like fundamental like they weren't crazy was it like but so was it like instead of um like the well, like the background vocal was like e or whatever <laughs> like did you did you go like jesus yeah that was like that? <laughs> yeah that we totally did that part we did little christian <laughs> ad-libs to that was what weezer was missing this whole time i think was... there you go <laughs> yeah that yeah. is totally their issue. So, so you you all met like in high school, and just like slowly, people just started like joining the band. Uh, and then, was it like 2016 or 17 that you all uh, released like your first EP? Uh, we formed in late 2016, and okay, then by so it would have been like 2017 then. Yeah, in 2017 we released two EPs. Oh, okay. And then, um, and we just did like a ton of like local shows and we would do like some regional stuff to like there's other parts of georgia you can kind of drive to um for shows so we just did like a bunch of local and regional stuff and then basically by the end of that year we had decided that um we just really wanted it to be a serious band mm -hmm. and so like the first lineup changes kind of came with like basically separating who was here for a joke and who was here to take it seriously and truthfully, back then to take it seriously, it feels a little silly. Who wants to take the callous Dow boys seriously? Yeah, I was like, you guys are not committed. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, though. But think about it. The Beatles is literally a, a pun. So, like, we're just like know, them. Yeah, we're, yeah, you're, exactly. we're, you're we're just like the Beatles. The same. <laughs> yeah, it's not that. It's not that wild of a of a idea. Yeah, but um, but so yeah. you all took it seriously <laughs> at that point, then. Yeah, we start so. We, we started to take it seriously uh, around like um, like beginning of 2018. We changed our lineup a little bit and it's the lineup that recorded um, Diane Mars and Celebrity and Celebrity Therapist. There, okay. There's a couple extra people on um, Celebrity Therapist, but uh, we did like a single. It's called the multi-stage rocket or great multi-stage rocket robbery. Almost forgot about that song, but <laughs> we... <laughs> Basically, as soon as we changed our lineup, we just like went in and did a single because like recording EPs at first, like we did them like super just shitty DIY, like all of us did like live take, like live tracking, like everybody in a room except basically Carson. Carson was the only one that got like isolated and recorded separately. But um, yeah, we we decided that we were going to like write one short song and we're going to actually go be a real band and see like see what that means how much it costs like what what all it entails to like actually go and record in a nice studio have somebody like actually mix and master it properly and stuff um and from there on it kind of gave us like a little bit of a pathway to getting ready to um uh da -da -da, record down mars basically mm -hmm. like we wanted to have a trial run of like making music the way you're supposed to make it <laughs> Mm. before we just like went into an album right. of like that we wanted to actually sound good and not just right. like a shitty DIY band. But, well, but yeah, well, I remember when Diane Mars came out and may, it may, might've been like a year after the album came out, but I remember somebody reaching out and was like, Hey, I know you really like the chariot. I'm a huge, like the Chariot's my favorite band of all time. And he was like, this like just seems like an even more like ridiculous version of the chariot. You need to check it out. So mm -hmm. I think it was like fake dinosaur bones or something. One, one of those songs. Yeah. And I remember thinking, wow, this is incredible. And that was like probably, yeah, three ish years ago now. Mm -hmm. And I remember back then it was like, you know, maybe a 10,000, 25,000 people like monthly listeners on Spotify. Oh, and yeah. then like, I mean, it was like pretty early on. And then, you know, mm -hmm. now it's like just blown up and you guys are going <laughs> to Europe. And like it just at some point it felt like, whoa, like not only were you all trying to be a real band but this now feels like a real band like there's money coming in 
Uh, I'm some. to a certain degree. I would imagine <laughs> a some, little some bit. level of money. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> They're still sharing at home, so I don't know. But yeah. you're paying some bills with it. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I mean, it, it seems it seems like this is like kind of exploding. Like people really are paying attention. And um, yeah, at what point did it really feel like, whoa, this is this is a thing? Like th- this this doesn't feel like just like a we're gonna only be able to be like a Georgia band, but we're actually gonna be able to go all across the nation and to Europe. Like when did it feel like, wow, this was this is a thing that's happening? Uh I don't know. I can't um I can't speak for all of my bandmates if we have like if we had a collective like thought about that. Mm. Uh I know for a fact Carson and I from day one have been like, oh my god, we're gonna be world famous. <laughs> like <laughs> we <laughs> because uh even when we were like a really shitty band our like the you can't tell us we've ever had a boring show like right. anybody who's seen us like they like even when we were not worth a shit even when no one on the internet knew who we were if people were at our shows they were going crazy and that's like that was kind of the only thing that we needed you know to like know that this was going to be like something that we wanted to take seriously and really believe in but um i don't I don't know when it exactly felt like real or anything like the first time I think we did like a full U.S. tour. I was like, oh, my God, I can actually do that. Like I didn't die. Like, (laughs) right. (laughs) Like we we didn't like, you know, totally go for broke. I'm not like making a GoFundMe or anything because like (laughs) not, you know, knock on wood that I don't. But it's a yeah. Any anytime like we do stuff like that, that kind of like validated that like oh my god this is a real thing same thing with like like do you do you ever like have you had the experience yet of Mm -hmm. you know i'm sure at some point like when you go home for like thanksgiving or christmas or something like that Mm -hmm. and like the you know your uncle or your grandpa or whoever it would be would say something along the lines of like are you still doing that band thing (laughs) like where as if it's like a hobby but at some point that like switches where it's like no actually this is like a really like people seem to care about this and it's paying like some of the bills like it's no longer just a hobby have you gotten to that point yet i would imagine so yeah i think like um but i don't know exactly which point it would be but like i i know my dad always would kind of like bust my balls about (laughs) how much money i dumped into (laughs) this band and everything because um i like the whole time I was in college, I worked like f- more than full time hours of work when I really I was still living at home. I really didn't need to. It was just that I was like pouring all of my money back into the band and like doing a full course load of college and we were gigging and writing like wow. all of that. But um, when uh, we I think the first time we sold out of vinyl pressing for Die on Mars, I was like explaining that to my dad like explaining that we had just sold we'd sold because we sold out two vinyl pressings of Diron Mars, which we have a third repress in the way, but it like takes forever. But um yeah, I was like explaining that to him that I'm like, yeah, like first I gotta explain the vinyl records are back. <laughs> and that is <laughs> and that like CD sales are kind of inconsequential at this point. But like we we move a ton of vinyl. Um but I was like I was like explaining that to him that I was like we we just there that many people want this vinyl not just that that many people wanted it but like people go back and they like people are reselling it for like 150 bucks right for like mm-hmm. the first pressing of it when it originally sold for 25 i think but um and you just screwed over someone's business mo- uh, plan by uh by saying <laughs> that this is gonna be a third pressing i well right. some people still want the first pressing and everything that's true that's so true, like yeah. you know whatever they're gonna honestly good because i don't need somebody making 150 dollars off of something that we were only able to sell for 25. yeah you're not getting the cut of that yeah no (laughs) i don't give a shit if you're selling it for (laughs) for that much but um but yeah my that was like the first time my dad was like oh my god like this is like a real thing that you're doing i was like yeah i've been trying to tell you this whole time (laughs) yeah did you ask him when he's gonna buy his vinyl Oh, he bu- he bugs me for him all the time, and we uh, th- I shouldn't admit this or anything, but we um, we had a auction like maybe a couple months back where we had some test pressings of a uh, celebrity therapist, and um, we were just trying to like raise a couple extra funds for like 
you know, all of our summer touring and whatnot. But um, we basically set aside like eight pressing or uh, test presses. Carson made these like really nice handwritten lyric sheets and like he made one sheet for like each song and uh, put them up for auction. And I basically told everyone like, hey, if these like hit over a certain price, then like I'll just include like a bunch of other like I keep like random bits of our merch just to have as keepsakes and also like every so often somebody does you a really cool favor and I like want to be able to (laughs) give them like a cool right artifact from the callous Cowboys if I can but um anyways my (laughs) my we put them up like on eBay for auction and all of them went for over two hundred dollars a piece and a couple of them hit like five hundred dollars wow uh but my dad was in there like bidding on them and I'm like I can see you don't do that I was like (laughs) I'll give you one (laughs) like He's just he's just pumping the market. I know. That's I'm like, right. you're just bumping up the prices. Don't do this. Like if somebody <laughs> if they're able to see that someone with my same last name won one of these, like <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. That's also, like those... you can just give me that money. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> that reminds me of like Storage Wars, like the you know that like TLC show or whatever, where yeah, they're yeah. like just like they're like yeah. fake bidding, like they'll just like yeah, drive up that bid just to piss just off. Just so the their other, friends their have to Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you're just gassing you guys. Uh, <laughs> my dad would have done the exact same thing, though. Yeah, it's like when your dad like buys Girl Scout cookies from you. <laughs> but yeah, right. uh, exactly yeah. what it is—just five hundred dollars <laughs> Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Look. <laughs> So let's talk about celebrity therapists because it mm-hmm. felt like that was as much as like Diane Mars was really already starting to like there there was momentum there, but like I still remember everybody in like the heavy music world just like freaked out when celebrity therapists that it was one of those albums where I think a lot of people didn't know who you were before then. And then all of a sudden there was all this buzz because of like how much people love that album. And so, um, yeah, did, did you kind of get that sense of celebrity therapist being just like a big deal? And then it was like, it, it like it really was only continuing that like momentum of growth for you all. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, Like, I don't know, the second that we kind of, like, or at least for me, the second that we got, like, the music videos back and, like, saw it, I was like, oh, my God, this looks like a real band made it. This doesn't look like, (laughs) like, the the Dad Mars music videos, don't get me wrong, I'm also very proud of those as well. But, um, I don't know, something about just, like, seeing and hearing it all together and whatnot that I'm like, oh, this looks like something that, like, I I mean, it's cool to have a feeling of, like, we make things that I'm genuinely like I genuinely love like if I wasn't in this band I would be like that's the coolest shit ever too but um yeah I think uh we we also put out celebrity therapists on a label (laughs) so that felt a little bit more like this was something a little bit bigger than die on mars because um down mars we were all of us were like scraping together every single penny that we had and wow. like <laughs> we were selling all of our possessions and whatever to um fund that record and like the music it really is a commune cullen <laughs> yeah it is it 100 percent is i love yeah. it yeah <laughs> but uh it's, our, it's like not not do you not only do you have a cult following you guys are just literally a cult yeah some days <laughs> more than i i like to think we're a little bit more like a family um oh that's that, how they all start out though yeah they all, yeah. They all start we're just a family <laughs> here's the kool-aid yeah we uh i think if we were a cult we'd all probably um listen to carson a little bit more maybe that's true <laughs> I, it I doesn't seem little... to be that strong of a patriarch in this cult which means it might not actually be a cult then yeah yeah i mean we're we're pretty we're pretty democratic we all pretty like i think um i say like we're like a family because we all like we bicker all <laughs> like all sorts of ways i think uh dan and i the one who was supposed to be on this interview too um dan and i fight like constantly <laughs> Like, like literal oh, siblings. Now I'm really bummed that he's off the that he's off the call. I know it would be real juicy. I'm sure, but uh, <laughs> yeah, to the point that like Dan and I do everything together. We're best friends, but we do bicker. Like what? What is crazy. Uh, so? Th- there's going to be a lot of Cal Stowboy fans, obviously, listening to this episode, and I'm sure you like have 
you know, gotten to know some of your fans. What is the one kind of like bickering? Maybe it's between you and Dan or somebody else in the band. What's the one piece of bickering that you're like, people probably should know about this or like, it'd be kind of funny if our fans knew about this. Oh man. If they're not going <laughs> to give our fans flavor aid. <laughs> I, We're not a cult. <laughs> I don't well, Type of is, it, is it like, I mean, like there's a million things I could talk about with like Cullen and I are best friends. Sure. We probably have had like plenty of little like spats or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people, if they actually cared about us, would want to know some of those things. But nobody <laughs> cares about Cullen and I like people care about the Cow Style Boys. So I'm sure there's something that they, <laughs> like the fans of Cow Style Boys are like, spill the tea right now, Maddie. Oh, man. It's so tough. I don't know. So Dan and I are kind of like like i don't know how to explain it we're kind of like day-to-day -day managers and depending on who you ask and what it's about um either of us will say we're more important to like <laughs> whatever it is yeah this sounds like a family yeah like this. so like like I don't, I don't know how to explain it um and we're what is what's a form of bickering i don't know like the most tame example i can probably think of is driving um dan carson and i all drive the most like when we're on tour and uh dan and i are both like dead convinced that we are the best driver and that everybody else who drives is stupid and doesn't mm. know what they're doing and like <laughs> mm -hmm. and is gonna kill all of us like it, i don't know that that one uh so who's driving in europe we actually hired a driver oh well, that's probably smart which is so fancy um i we've I've never not had that's to drive. what that's you've you're now a real band Maddie you're a real that band. one you've, that one you, I feel you have your own like driver band. that's not in the band <laughs> yeah uh truthfully we're like we just started touring with like an actual crew member like for the first time this year and it's our front of house tech Chris and like literally before that we have never had a single bit of help doing like anything when it comes to touring so like I don't know that it turns into like a little bit of like a 24 hour job for us, but I'm very excited to not have to drive in Europe and that nobody <laughs> else has to. to. <laughs> why not make Chris drive? Oh, cause Chris is, cause Chris does. Cause he's a bad driver. You're, a, you're the best well, driver, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say Chris has never driven. Cause he's like, that's not my job description. And I'm like, that's fair. I'm paying you to be the front of house <laughs> tech. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to drive, but, uh, <laughs> So if you're the driver of the Callous Cowboys, does that mean that you get to man the radio and like who who like what playlist is being played and what albums are being played? Yes. Typically, typically whoever's driving, they get to kind of be the one that decides or whoever is like co-piloting or whatever. So is, are there but... is there ever any bickering about that? Because I would imagine there's probably a variety of tastes and some people <laughs> don't necessarily like some of the music that's being played because that person's driving. <laughs> uh who so we do this thing have you guys ever played skip game like i don't think so it's a spotify game very fun to okay. do if you're on road trips or like with a group of people or whatever it's basically you make a a public like spotify playlist and, and right and you, you can invite... you can like add like songs or whatever to the queue to it right yes yeah, so you can add everybody can add songs to the queue for it um basically we'll if we're in the mood to play skip game <laughs> we'll uh or if like somebody can't think of anything to put on or we're trying to really like burn time um we'll start a skip game playlist and it's basically everybody throws in the most upsetting songs possible and <laughs> <laughs> the goal is to for every time somebody in the van says that they need to skip one of the songs on there um that person gets one point right first per person to like five points loses just an example so and so, it can be upsetting in any way wow. shape or form like it doesn't have to be just like this is a really bad song it could be like the these are really like horrible lyrics or something like that anything that is just intolerable to listen to and oh. The better Colin, that you let the dog. Okay, out. Yeah. Maddie, do you want? Do you want? Are you ready to win here? You ready? Oh, sure. For this? What's the winner? Okay. Cullen, remember when we were talking to Zayo, uh, and they were yeah. talking about this this band that only has lyrics about urine? Yeah, Yellow River Boys. Okay, no. Yellow River Boys. Maddie, there you go. 
play any one of those songs. I think they have like a few albums. Uh, mm-hmm. Zayo was tel- telling us about them. Literally every mm-hmm. single song is just about like, like urine, peeing in people's mouths, like that whole thing. Like just. But it sounds not, like just, it, it's like a really well produced, like country bluegrass kind of album. It's hilarious that's insane i will definitely check that out i might end up like enjoying musically, it but <laughs> musically it's on point it's very, really very good but it's all a piss joke that's insane <laughs> so yeah, yeah that, now, you now, now you will, will be the winner games. of the skip game that'll be in my arsenal yeah no that game's good especially if you know the people that you're with you can like just add in like their least favorite like whatever song they just like fucking hate like you add that in there and it'll just, it, you just have to sit there and watch everybody get driven insane too. It's I very totally fun. I'm playing this game next time Mason and I go. Yeah, on this trip. sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm already excited for it. Uh, all right. So let's talk about Furnace Fest. Uh, that's oh, why yeah. we're here. So uh, Cullen and I have got this little fun deal this year where we're, we're doing all these like Furnace Fest bands. We're interviewing all these Furnace Fest bands about the festival. And so uh, that means as a listener right now, if you still have not gotten tickets to Furnace Fest, which you should have, but if you have not, still please go get a ticket to Furnace Fest so you can see a band like the Cowstow Boys absolutely go insane on stage. It will probably be, arguably, it's, I mean, you, there have been some really great performances at Furnace Fest the last couple of years. I don't know. I, like, if I had to put money <laughs> on the best performance ever in Furnace Fest history, I think the Dallas Cowboys would be a really good bet on that. So if you haven't bought tickets yet, <laughs> the Cal- the Cal- it's Cowboys, the Cal, sorry, the Cal- <laughs> Cowboys. <laughs> oh, I, I did that were- so well for so long, and then like finally it slipped. I'm sure. I'm sure, sure it's not the first time that's like, yeah, right, no, yeah, yeah, happens no, all I'm the sure. time. <laughs> yeah, I, I I would imagine even some band members have let that slip every now and then when they're not thinking about it too hard. Oh yeah, it's there's uh, now an artist called the Dallas Cowboys, so we have to be careful. Oh yeah, you got to be really uh, letting it slip. Don't want to have a mix up. <laughs> yeah, you don't want Jerry Jones down your back trying to sue you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you haven't gotten tickets yet, please go get tickets so you can see a band like the Cal- the Callus Dow Boys, because again, my bet is it might be one of the best Furnace Fest performances ever. And there's been some great ones. I'm telling you. So you're putting a lot of pressure. The on us, there's a lot but... of pressure, but I think the Cowboys Cowboys can actually live up to that pressure. I hope so. I think it'll be the only one with a fiddle too. So probably, probably. I mean, truthfully, even if it goes bad, I got a free ticket to Furnace Fest. So like, if there y'all don't show up, I don't care. I get to I get to be there for free all weekend. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So you so uh, let's talk about a, a, at least a little hint or two about the set. I mean, I don't know if there has even any been any decisions made about like what songs you're going to play, any cool shit you're going to do. But like, is there any little insider information that we can reveal to our listeners about, hey, this is what the Cal Stab Boys are going to be doing at Furnace Fest? Oh, man. Um, I, honestly, I don't genuinely. So we try to we try to change up our sets pretty often. I don't know if either of y'all have seen us, but um, we usually... not yet. F- Furnace Fest will be the first time I, I get to see you all, which I'm very oh, excited. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're very excited. We're we'll definitely have something special for this because usually, like, we basically change up the set every tour, um, and you know, we have like stupid little transitions, and like we'll do like tiny little nuances of like um rearrangements of the songs or like sometimes like on one or two of the songs we'll like uh you know play the breakdown a second time but it'll be like really slow or we'll drop tune it or we'll like we always like have like like we try to change up our set as much as possible so that way if you come to see us multiple times you'll get to see something different um (laughs) i gotta say with europe kind of on our brains for this coming week i don't even know if uh we've fully put together our set list for this one um i will say i believe we're playing something that's never been played live before oh but okay i can't reveal too much information about that but yeah we we should have something that is like super duper like new ready for that that might be worth the price of admission just right there that's that's what I I'm saying. So. Yeah, if you haven't bought the ticket to Furnace Fest, 
Um, is is Callous Style Boys one of those bands that goes by like working titles instead of like the actual album titles, or do you have or, or are the album titles the same thing as your working titles? Um, usually, so like a lot of the times the the demos will get like some kind of silly name, <laughs> and then um, by the time that like lyrics are done writing for it, and like because a lot of the times Carson won't have like the concept of what the song is about like yeah. done until we're a little bit closer to going into the studio. So like we, we more keep a lot of all, of, we have lots of long song titles. Yeah. Kind of like some, some of them. Um, so like we more have like little shorthands that um, we refer to them. We have a song called a brief article regarding time loops. And what people don't know is everybody will come up to me like fans will come up to me and be like i love a brief article and i'm always like what are you talking about we called that song time loops for like three years straight and i forget <laughs> that it's like this whole long name and i'm like what song is that <laughs> but Col uh, but yeah colin do you want to say why you asked that because we've already brought up the chariot i feel like this is where you were going with that right I wasn't I wasn't going to talk about the chariot because you always talk about the chariot on every episode. Well, for I mean, how minutes, can you so. not though, right? <laughs> no, th there's a lot of bands. It's not just the chariot, but a lot of bands will 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 obviously only remember their song names based off their working titles, mm -hmm. and not just their album titles. Yeah. But I figured with a with a band like House Now Boys that you guys would probably do that as well, but I wasn't sure. Well, fun. Uh, speaking of the Chariot, um, an old working title. We didn't release it under this name, um, but an old working title for one of our songs was called. Uh, oh, it was called before there was Johns Creek. There was Alpharetta, <laughs> which is <laughs> just <laughs> so for the most of the time that Carson and I um like knew each other like in the early stages of the band carson lived in john's creek and i lived in alpharetta and they're just john's creek is also basically just alpharetta they're just like two atlanta suburbs that are right beside each other um <laughs> but yeah there's that one there was one called um it was called like toucan sam's like m death fairy midnight death fairy or so something and Carson will like be so annoyed that I don't, didn't remember <laughs> I just remember it was called Toucan like for shorthand we called it Toucan Sam for a long time uh what was it we had another one too that was really good but um yeah so it, we we don't have that many like crazy working names like but yeah <laughs> I mean Love it's that. still great I mean Actually, I think a lot of like those working titles mm -hmm. reveals a little bit about like kind of the madness behind some of the brains that are working on some of these bands. And, and I think Cal Star Boys is one of those bands where it's just like th this seems like such a a band that like has been on the Internet before. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If there's anything you can say about us is that we're definitely logged on <laughs> in one way or another but yeah <laughs> <laughs> totally all right well you said that you're going to be around furnace fest for the entire weekend i'm oh, sure yeah, there's totally. a lot of bands that you're looking for and i forget what day you guys are playing i, I don't remember what what is it friday saturday or sunday we play sunday sunday okay mm -hmm. so you're at the end of the the week which you know or the weekend but you know so you're really gonna have to like forget about those other couple days because you're probably going to feel all the, the pressure of a Sunday. But uh, what what is the what is like a few what are a few of the bands that you're looking forward to seeing in at, at Furnace Fest um, Friday, Saturday or even Sunday? Uh, top of my list is probably Armor for Sleep. Oh, um, hmm. the their album, What to Do When You're Dead or whatever. I've been listening to that shit since I was like 12 and I've never seen them live, even like because they've gotten back together. Well, obviously they're back together, but like any of the tours that have come through Atlanta, um, I just either was on tour or busy. I, I don't know. Anyways, very excited. They're a very formative band. That record is like super important to me. I'm very excited to see them. Um, uh, very excited to see Scowl. Who? Oh yeah. This yeah. is the second time we've played a festival that they've also been on, but. Um, last year we played do you know what the fest in florida is yeah for sure it's like yeah it's more of like i don't want to say like gaslight anthem type bands but it's like it's more of like a punk yep. and like 
that kind of fest. They book us on there though, and we do really well. But um, it's all in like small. It's basically a bunch of small clubs that are rented out, and then they host a music festival, and then there's one big like amphitheater stage. But anyways, uh, the line to get into Scowl was so long that like I, <laughs> I left like it, you know. I went to walk over there like 15 minutes before they started because I wanted to make sure I could like have a cool place to watch them or whatever. And I stood in the line. The by the time I get to the front of the line, they were basically done with their set. And I was like, Oh no. I wanted to see them so bad. But um very excited to see them. Uh Better Lovers is on it now. Yes. Too, yeah. Right? How cool is that gonna be? Amazing. I'm so excited. Like every time I die was like, I think kind of why we started Dow Boys, like that was the well, first metal. Well, Colin, band. you have a symbol that's literally signed by their drummer. I do. Oh, really? Yeah, like I'm always forgetting drummer? his last name, but uh, Holy Oak. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's so. Sick. But back when he was with Norma Jean, yeah, we've got a, a symbol from Norma Jean, and he's got it signed. That's so cool. Oh my Isn't god. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my god, there's a spider on that big one. Oh. <laughs> don't get bitten <laughs> my basement's crawling with spiders that was a huge spider you sorry <laughs> so scowl armor for sleep and and, you, and better uh, lovers and better lovers <laughs> oh hold on let me look at i don't i didn't mean to block out my thing let me look at the lineup again because i, I can't mean, remember it's, it's just a killer lineup i mean i gotta imagine that with better lovers um carson's probably pretty influenced by um but, Greg Pusciato, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, they ha they have some similarities that I've that I've heard. Yeah, I uh, Carson definitely yeah. like looks up to him a lot. I think Dillinger and Every Time I Die were like two of the more like important bands right. to. I, and you I know, think you can hear both this. of them. You can totally hear both of them in in Calista Boys. Yeah, yeah. I'd hope so. A, a little bit. You know <laughs> what's interesting though is I would say with with Dow Boys. There's a little bit, there's a lot, not a little bit, there's a lot more melody involved than those two bands. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> something that has started to get stronger just as we've gone on. Um, Carson and I talk about this sometimes because like, because our first band was like an emo band. Um, mm -hmm. We kind of wanted to have something that was like, we wanted it to be like a real like melodic post hardcore, like kind of jazzy going thing. And um I think what we kind of realized with Dow Boys is that like the further we got into this, the more we realized that there are really no rules to what we are doing. And um, I think and some of the more melodic parts are kind of like Carson and I bring in some of our emo and like melodic post hardcore yeah. roots into what we're doing, which has been really cool that we like actually, you know, are able to pull that off. I'm sure some people think we don't, but <laughs> I really I like it. Totally do. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Is it a requirement to have ADHD in uh, Cal Style Boys? I mean, I think I might be one of the only ones in the band that doesn't, but <laughs> that says I something, also am then. too afraid to find that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think all of us definitely have a... I, I feel like it's not so much ADHD, but I feel like we definitely have a little bit of the... I hate to say Zoomer, like mentality oh, gold, goldfish brain yeah yeah like you ever watch those videos that are like family guy clips and subway surfer clips and then asmr video clips and then like no, a podcast talking about oh my god i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> it's basically these videos that are just meant to like hold your attention and there's like five different things happening and so oh if you are ever like bored of any of them you can kind of like your eyes can just flick back and forth between them whatever that's like that's a little bit of how i think of our music sometimes can i ask what year you graduated high school uh 2014 okay. i'm 27 okay. i'm not that yet so, but so you would have yeah you you would have been a are you a Gen Zer? I'm like right no, on the cusp. Like, you're like, yeah, you're you're kind of a cusper right there. Right yeah, there. I'm the oldest, or er, right. I'm not quite the oldest one in the band. Our drummer, our newer drummer now, he's older than me, but everybody else is like about a year or so younger than me, at least. Oh, okay. interesting. So, huh, okay, yeah, just a bunch yeah. of young. That sounds. That, yeah. Uh, the video you just talked about sounds awful. <laughs> 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 you know, so I like anything I wanna... watching him all the time. I'm it's, like, it, like just even thinking about it is giving me anxiety. 
it's on if like you go on tiktok or like instagram reels or whatever you'll find them eventually but <laughs> it's like it's literally like it's it's a i don't know it's like good for your brain if you have like adhd to watch all the like it's probably not good for your brain it feels say, satisfying it the but <laughs> <laughs> gives you that dopamine rush yeah um one question that I, I find a little f silly, but just got to ask at least, I guess. So obviously there's the Dow boys in the Callous mm -hmm. Dow boys. There's that word. Has anybody ever like misunderstood you or like misidentified you all as being like Dowis? Uh, There's one time. Like, really? Okay. Guy. There is at least one time. Well, not not like no. This guy tried to cancel us for like culture appropriation, and oh, I'm like, that I see, is I see, I see, I see. such an insane stretch because we literally just like we could have said D O W, and I think more people would understand what we're doing. But like, we kind of wanted to spell it weird to throw people off a little bit. All right. the stock market people would have been upset. Yeah, then. exactly. Um, there's this cool guy on if you if you Google or not Google if you YouTube the callous dow boys but you spell it d-o-w there's this guy who's dressed like the unabomber who like made this like video of himself um R rest in peace by the way i know <laughs> rest in peace that <laughs> the unabomber go teddy but <laughs> no there's this this old guy who made this little like video manifesto of himself dressed but like the unabomber and um he's talking about like all the people in wall street and he call he keeps calling them the callous dow boys and the video is hard as fuck it doesn't have that many mm -hmm. views but we used to sample it in our live set because like he i was gonna say you had to yeah. awesome. he ended the video being like the callous dow boys don't give a fuck about you and we were like <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome that's too cool yeah you got to bring that back i know it's it, i should like post it on twitter or something well i, don't I mean know that's if many people know about that but <laughs> That is that is how you should like as you guys are like getting ready, like you're on the stage at Furnace Fest, pick up your guitar, you're ready to go, and then right literally like a second before you're ready to play your first song, just callous style boys don't give a fuck about you, <laughs> and then just rip into whatever you guys go into. It's an idea for sure. <laughs> just an idea, just an idea. But yeah. Wow. I that's wild. And and this like this guy's like it's completely unrelated. Like this guy has no idea about you all, right? No. So he must have uploaded that like right around the time that we started the band, or maybe like right before. So like no like really nobody do us. He wow. just like he just had some shit on his video? chest and like wanted to let it off. I don't I don't know what his name is. It was like something how, how did he spell it? D like D D O D O W. Yeah. D O W. Because he's talking about like Wall Street people or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's see if we Love can find me. it. I, I, we have to watch it on here if we can. It's on YouTube? Yeah, it should be on YouTube. All right. Hopefully it wasn't in. taken down. It's just going to be difficult to find on YouTube now because, like, it's just going to want to, like, go to Callous Dow Boys like you, you guys. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, weird. wait, wait. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Nope, I see Did him. Did you find it? Yep. <laughs> no, it is the cow. That's funny. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to share my my window here. This is <laughs> This is great. I love this already. Yes, this is Oh it. my gosh. <laughs> is he a white supremacist? Too? He looks like it, doesn't he? Well, it's Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> but I'm here to talk to you about another group. Not the Patriots. Not the Seahawks. In fact, the group I'm talking about isn't like even like a football walls. team. They are the Callous Dow Boys. <laughs> and they are the people who run Wall Street. These are the people who give themselves massive multi-million dollar bonuses. They're already billionaires, but still they give themselves 500 million as a bonus for doing nothing. So far, I'm on board with this well, guy. Well, Americans. Yeah. I mean, he's eating. This is crazy. This is. <laughs> he's eating. This is... Their homes. He ain't wrong. These people don't give a fuck about you. They are the callous Dow Boys. 
Oh, he said it in reverse. <laughs> yeah. 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 But... <laughs> then you go crazy. That yeah. is that's perfect. That's awesome. Well, that that's all a coincidence. Yeah, like literally. So when we were like, um, I think first getting like our little social media presence together, we were just like Googling like if anybody had anything possibly related to that name and we we're just going through every single result like that would come up just to just to make sure nobody was gonna like come after us as if like the dallas cowboys might not come after us but um yeah we found that video and we just thought it was so funny he just had some shit on his chest just had to fucking let everybody know <laughs> i'm on board with the guy cool. i'm I'm a, I'm a believer i'll follow he's his not, call he's not wrong he's really not like <laughs> <laughs> She's not a fan of the Wall Street people. Yeah. <laughs> Neither are us. So, wonderful. Well, yeah. uh, Maddie, <laughs> let's get into your top five most influential albums. I'm sure you're very, very prepared for this. So, uh, we're, we're looking forward to the bands or the artists and the albums that have influenced you in your life. So, uh, kind of go, you know, you can go in order. You can go, mm-hmm. like, chronologically. You can do whatever you want. So, uh, yeah, five five influential albums of your life. Ooh, okay. Um, I feel like like number one spot and nothing will ever unseat this is um Relationship of Command by At the Drive In. Wow, what um, a great fucking album. Yeah, that's like to me, that's like a perfect album. I just I think it's amazing. I discovered it when I was like probably thirteen or fourteen and um and like I didn't even under like when I was first listening to it, like when I was in middle school, I didn't fully grasp everything that was happening like i didn't fully understand like why it was so cool and i still thought it was cool and like it's one of the it's like i can just keep listening to it and like find something new to love about it and like it, it's cool to like have something that you can con- continually like sink your teeth into but it's still like so familiar um the, the at the yeah. drive-in has one of my favorite music facts of all time and that is uh a thousand dollars a week on weed well, th- that is up there. I feel like this one's even better than that. What? Uh, also, I'm sure that they it wasn't just weed that they were on, but oh yeah, uh, I'm sure there was I'm sure there was a lot of other things that they were on because like there's no way you can have the kind of shows that they had without peeing on something. But they played. It was right around the time of like relationship of command, and they were in Australia, if I remember. Oh right. yeah, the big day out. Um, yeah. Okay. And everybody, yes. like all these huge artists, huge, huge artists, yes. um, like are being M- interviewed by MTV, and they're and the interviewer is like, "Hey, who are you looking forward to seeing to, uh, seeing this like this year or whatever?" And everybody was saying, "At the drive-in, at yes. the drive-in, at the drive-in." I know exactly. Got to check out at the drive-in. About. Yes. So like it brought up all this hype. Here's what's cool about that. Hmm. Okay, this is a massive music festival in Australia. The stage that they mm-hmm. were on and that they went all the like. Like they just fucking destroyed the stage. They did whatever they could. That stage was owned by none other than the Wiggles. Oh, because yeah. they're Australian. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. And they're like, that's probably, awesome. honestly, they're probably the biggest Australian band like worldwide. Yeah. They are by far. And so, in fact, yeah, far, they like yeah. in, in Australia, they own all of this like, like stages and like massive oh, yeah. like amps and shit. Like they own all of that. So if you're going to like do a big Australian music festival, like the mm-hmm. Wiggles are the, who you like purchase that or rent that from. Yeah, no, I fully believe that. I just watched a video essay on the full history of the Wiggles the other day. And I, I totally like, did too. I was like, we I watched the same video. Maybe. Well, I except was, the watched... videos that are all like, like five of them all no. at the same time. <laughs> I was watching one video, one singular video. <laughs> While she was listening to a podcast and playing a video. Yeah, I was doing three other things, but there's only one video. But (laughs) (laughs) no, they like, it's crazy how much like history they have. And like, there's like some drama and scandals and everything too. Like, that's fascinating. I had no idea about all that about the Wiggles. I fully believe that though. That's awesome. Anyway, that's that's one of my favorite music facts of all time is at the drive-in destroyed the Wiggles stage. Yeah, that's so sick. (laughs) All right, so Relationship of Command, one of the best albums in heavy music ever. Love it. Yes. What What else you got? Um, probably say uh, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge by My Chemical Romance. Oh, oh yeah. Is, hey, okay. That's the one that no one ever picks. That uh, Really? To me, that's... No, I'm just joking. Oh, <laughs> oh I was like... <laughs> I feel like that's a basic answer, but like... It's a good one, yeah. 
that's like why I wanted to be in a band was I used to just like nice. watch my chemical romance videos like freaking constantly. And um we played a really cool venue last year called the Norva in uh Norfolk, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And beautiful theater. It's like been around forever. Apparently everybody that is famous ever has played this theater. And I didn't know that until after we played our set. Like we we opened, we played our set, and then we go to the green room and uh they have signed drum heads from like all of these bands like all over the wall including a couple from my chem and i like went on youtube and looked up their shows and i was able to find all these videos and i was like oh my god i was just on that same stage like that's <laughs> the craziest thing ever but um but yeah that one uh what so, so so did you get into my chemical romance because of their songs or because gerard way is because he's so a, a dreamy like yeah yeah <laughs> um no, I genuinely was into them because of their songs, but good. Yes. Good, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember my, my friend showing me them when we were like 10 and she was like, look at these weird goths. And I was like, yeah, that's crazy. And then I went home and looked up every single song. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how Mason and I would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> For real. You sit around YouTube, you look up that the back in the day, that's how you yeah. discovered all the we just wanted to hear who does everyone else think is super weird. And we were like, that's what we like. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that band is super important to me. That record is probably my favorite record of theirs. And um, beautiful. But yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm on two. I got three. The third one, um, maybe the big dirty by uh, every time I die. Yeah. Um, just cause that's my favorite. Every time I die record. That's not the first one that I got into but um i don't know i just love that record it's just so fun it just has like the right amount of production value that band like i really did not like a lot of metal and um like hardcore like when we started this band and i was about to say like you said that at the beginning and i'm Mm -hmm. like um you've already listed (laughs) two of like the better hardcore bands out there so i don't know what where are you going with that well so at the drive-in at the time was like probably the heaviest thing i ever listened to even though really most of that record like they're pretty melodic you know yeah um they don't have like i I think i just i didn't like a ton of screaming i didn't like a lot of metalcore and to be fair a lot of it sucks and the time that I was still to this day. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's very oversaturated, which I feel like I have to explain to people all the time that like the metalcore that I make is very different than like the like metalcore that Pierce the Veil makes. No shade to them. I actually really love them, but we're very different I, bands. I don't even know if I would categorize you guys as metalcore. We're technically mathcore, and if you want to split a bunch of hairs and everything, that's technically yeah. a subgenre of metalcore. Yeah, I tell I people suppose, metalcore just to be easy. I don't know what to call yeah, it anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> but um uh but yeah, I I didn't really like it. Carson made me um watch Every Time I Die at uh one of the like last warp tours, I think. It was in 2016. And uh I was like, yeah, this band's like okay. I still don't really like love this genre. <laughs> But their guitarist, the the wrestler one, Andy, yeah, he came out wearing a cowboy hat, and it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, and it's a million degrees outside, and they are just like they had the most fun ever. And I was like, I didn't know these bands were fun, you know, like <laughs> they don't. That band did not take themselves like too seriously ever, and like I really loved them for it. And that's kind of like I think, you know, more than just like sonically, we kind of like led with a little bit of that ethos that like right we're never going to take ourselves like too seriously um doing this but but yeah um those are three. Ooh, i gotta think of the fourth one um what what what, what, what would i say maybe um oh i so this is a little bit out of left field but uh you know 100 gex are you familiar? Uh, familiar. Not to, I, I haven't listened to them. Much. Oh, really? So they, yeah. they put out an album called A Thousand Gex. They have a couple albums out now, but their breakout album is called um, A Thousand Gex. And they're like a hyper pop. Hard to define yeah. that anymore, but hyper pop duo. And um, which sounds like very like not in our genre, but they are like their ADHD music, like very purely like it's all left turns it's all weird it's also a lot of like 
they have lots of interesting guitar work it's kind of underrated like the guitar work that they have in uh their music but um they sound like they were raised on like all the same music that i was and that they just like put it into a blender and like <laughs> <laughs> they have like like they have stupid like skrillex style wubs in between like a chuggy breakdown thing that lasts like 10 seconds and then like they'll have glitchy screams and like auto-tuned melodic parts like they're just like all over the place um but that album kind of changed like just how i thought about music in general that um oh, their wikipedia yeah. says that they first met at a rodeo can't can't beat that that that's, sounds that's, like a lie you're, that's you're destined though. you're destined for stardom if that's the first time you ever met somebody was that a rodeo that's, that's so funny you know i used to i used to rodeo back in the day what really yeah what yeah what did you what rodeo the, what, were you one of those people that were like on a horse and you'd like lasso <laughs> a cow or something no i so <laughs> in rodeo there's like there's eight sports right there's right. like your bull riding, your bronc riding, uh, calf rope and team rope, all whatever. Um, they, barrel racing, right? Barrel that's racing. Right? That's yeah. so that's like the women's sport. Women are allowed to do oh. any of the sports, but the one that they made for women, <laughs> it was basically something. So the ranchers' wives like had something to compete in, but yeah. Dude, I think barrel racing is like the most badass of all of them. It's pretty sick. I did it for about like. 15 years jesus and christ yeah wow, um, wow you're you're in you're in it maddie you're like yeah. you're fully like roadie yo yeah i was I, people don't believe it but like I, I was really like involved in that i kind of um i kind of let music take over i was tr like it truly is not your first rodeo like you've it, been to several thousand of them I'm i've sure been to point. a lot of them yes <laughs> um I'm, I'm always 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 impressed uh, so rodeo is like really big where I'm from. And okay. I have a lot of, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher uh, in my, during the day. Yeah. Um, and I have a lot of students uh, that, that do barrel racing and they've shown me some like their pictures and I, I've, I've like, I've gone to see one of their shows or one, not shows, one of their perform, not performances, competitions yeah, before. Like a race or a competition or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And the horses are like basically parallel with the ground oh, when yeah. they go around it's insane yeah it's like uh it's like um uh watching uh like like uh, moto uh what do they call it oh, like the, like the ones like on the like the where they're on the, the side like, yeah, like where they put, like, people that are like ground. scraping yeah, their yeah. knee when they're going around a turn yeah it's like that kind of angle mm -hmm. it's insane I, I i feel so bad for the horse's knees oh yeah <laughs> you would they had we all of the stuff that i did to take care of these damn horses and i was i'm still in debt from taking care of them oh yeah yeah but uh i used to have no, a i used to have a horse chiropractor that um i regularly went to and... like like use a like <laughs> road grader and just like go over their back like how do you how do you crack a, ba a horse's back to this day this is the horse chiropractor that i went to the most insane person i've ever met in my life and he was like he was like six <laughs> foot six like massive he would basically like go down their backs crack their backs they have a long neck so he'd go like crack their neck he was um he was a doomsday prepper i'm only going to tell you the story because <laughs> i love this what, what metal core band was he in and right <laughs> um he was actually the one who made that video yes <laughs> just that video. that exact same type of like just absolute psycho no this guy <laughs> carson um when i told carson about this guy he uh we have a one of, one of our shirts has a lyric from violent astrology that says bury your ar-15 so the drones overhead don't find it and this lyric was directly inspired by this horse chiropractor that i used to go to he used to and I would have to sit there holding the horse for him, right? And he'd be there for like two hours because he'd work on all the horses or whatever. So it's like it's like the weed man when you have to go and he's like measuring out your shit and you have to listen to his bullshit for like however <laughs> long and you're like, okay, awesome. Like, can you please finish up? It was like that. But he he would tell me about all the doomsday prepper shit he would do, including he would buy, he didn't smoke cigarettes, but he would buy a couple cartons of cigarettes every week. He'd buy a handful of cases of bullets every week, and he would buy a couple pounds of like ground coffee every week. And he would get a bunker and he would store all those things because he was convinced that that was going to be the currency when Obama crashed the economy 
exact words he told me. And then he also, he had a big property like out in the middle of nowhere, like North Georgia. And uh, he said he installed metal fence posting, like wire metal fence posting around his property. And he used metal fence posts specifically because he was, he would also stockpile like illegal guns, like unmarked and like unregistered guns. And he would take PVC pipe and like hollow it out he would like take apart his guns he would store it in the pvc pipe and bury it next to these metal uh fence posts in the ground because he was convinced obama was sending metal detecting drones through the sky to detect who had guns on their property so that way when those laws would finally get passed he would have his guns taken away it sounds Him insane. And I sound a lot alike i'm not gonna lie <laughs> Look, <laughs> Colin just heard about his hero. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this guy's like this guy's like my my wet dream right now. <laughs> I was I was also mind you I was like sixteen and seventeen, and I'm like I don't know shit about the world, but I don't like, can no you just crack my horse's back? Right <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he would just like every single time I saw him, he would just had some crackpot shit to say like that. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love that awesome. so much. All right. So we got 100 Gex. Yes. Uh, I think, is, is there one more or two more? I think I have one more. There's one more. One more. Ooh. Um, Wise choices. I know. I'm like, I'm trying to think of. Oh, okay. I'm going to say. Um, okay. I'm just going to say Danza 3 by the Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you know that record. <laughs> oh, of course. God. I will never be able to play guitar like that. Probably <laughs> like I was going to say every guitar player has to have that on their list. In my opinion, if, you, if you're in like any sort of band, that's somewhat chaotic. I mean, you have to, yeah, that record you have to like amazing. It's just so much fun and it's so crazy. And just like, the the song Yippie Kaye motherfucker, the first time I heard that, I was like, like what? Like, what the fuck? Like, I also don't give that much of a fuck about technical guitar playing, like that much. Like the I like our genre because I like the chaotic parts of it. Like I like yeah. kind of like the out of nowhere nonsense parts and like that kind of accidentally falls into technical realms, but like I don't know. Depending on, there is a couple of like technical bands I like, but it's not like really and truly like what I care about right. music for. But that band and that record, like it just, it does so many cool things. I think about it all the time. I just like, also uh, Josh Travis, the guitarist for yeah, like the, guitarist. the second half of their career. Um, he like rocks with us. He'll like tweet us out sometimes or like. He's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. He's like the coolest Was dude. Was he the one, in your opinion, that like made eight string plus guitars like cool as shit in the scene? Truthfully, he's a guitarist that I'm like, you can do anything. Yeah. Anytime I see someone with more than six strings, though, I'm like, that better be worth it. You better be doing <laughs> right, exactly. something fucking cool because <laughs> half the time I'm like, you could have just, you don't need it. Yeah. You don't need it. You could have just been in yeah. a lower tuning because. I know you're just doing that to drop that down to like a or whatever. Like it's you're like not when like, a guy wears like a Michael Jordan jersey at a pickup set. game. It's <laughs> like if you're gonna wear a Michael Jordan jersey at a pickup game, you better be good. Yeah, <laughs> that's so try hard. <laughs> Showing up in a Michael Jordan jersey. That's Maddie, so have you ever seen the video of Tony, the actual Tony Danza, watch oh, listening oh. to the Tony tap tap dance extravaganza for the first time? Yes, because he used to have a like a little daytime talk show. Yeah, and he's yeah. like it's hilarious. Yes, and everybody's <laughs> everybody's like so upset, like because it's fucked up music. It's like it's... <laughs> I think he's he makes like a joke at the end where he's like, "I'll be humming that all day." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it's so good. All right, well, there is the top five most influential albums of of you maddie that is yes. that's a pretty impressive list and you hear it i think in the cow Boys, and it just totally makes sense with you all 
Yeah, I think uh, most of my bandmates would share some of those. Maybe not as their top five, but definitely I didn't pick anything that was like hated by anybody else in the band. I don't think either. But but yeah, right. um, those are those are the top five. Love I dig it. it. Love <laughs> it. Sweet, Maddie. What would you like to plug? Ooh, uh, uh, us, the Callous Dow Boys. We're gonna be on tour. We're gonna be yeah. um, on tour from October into November with Protest the Hero and uh, Moon Tooth. That one's gonna be a full U.S. It's gonna be our first time in Canada. If you're Canadian and you're listening to this, please go to those because it's our first time there. Uh, what else? We're doing another European tour in January and February with Tesseract, um, nice. which is really cool. And on Process, that's the other band that's supporting. Uh, you're going to hear stuff that will need to be plugged pretty soon. Once we get home from Europe, we have some plans and announcements. Like, I hate to... Holla. I hate to big things coming, everybody, but... <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually didn't check with my band if there are things I'm like allowed to talk about or not <laughs> <laughs> before I hopped on here. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's all. I Sweet. Have to so, play. so we can expect some big things coming from the Callous Style Boys in the future, as um, always, including including a third pressing, right? Yes. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. We finally okay. decided on variants for that. Um, so that is currently in the works. Uh, what else? Yeah. yeah. Anything else you'd like to plug? We're going to be in an episode of uh, Ghost Adventures here soon. I love Ghost Adventures so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, is, like, is it a song that you've already made? Or are you making a, a song for them? Or are you, are we're you, is it not episode. a song thing? Are you like, you're we're, just like, like physically you're going personally. to be in an episode. Yeah. Your commune house is going to be in it. Yeah. That's it. We're, uh, there's actually a couple of ghosts in here. So, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Do you think they have a name? I don't know. Have you named them? Dan always, oh, what does he call it? He got, there's like, he always claims there's a shadow man outside of my room. And he just does that to fuck with me. But, <laughs> but have you I start to believe it. So, I don't, I don't know. I have a pet snake that's right outside my room. And I always ask her if she's seen him, but I don't think she has. <laughs> She doesn't talk back. Wow. Mm -mm. She's real quiet. But yeah, mm. there's uh we'll we'll be hunting we'll be hunting the shadow man that Dan thinks exists that I'm skeptical of, but interesting. <laughs> so you you've never had like any like inkling or feeling that there's a shadow man? No, and I want to see a ghost so damn bad, but I think I want it I too hard so they won't yeah. reveal themselves. Yeah. They're to like me. a cat. Do you know how that works with cats? Cats don't see ghosts. Cats, um, if you love them, they don't want anything to do with you. But if you don't like them, they want all your attention. You know what? That's that... like psycholo psychologically, that's how cats work. So I think that's how ghosts work too. That's why I've never liked cats because Same. yeah, we have, we have a cat that it's Dan's cat, but he's my mortal enemy that lives with us. And yeah, it's, I, that's why I hate him is because I'm like, I want to love you. I want to hold you. I want to cuddle you. And he just like, I, like me. I don't want to have to manipulate somebody <laughs> for their love. Yeah. Well, also right. I'm like, you live in my house for free. You get fed. You get this huge big house all to yourself. The least you can do is let me hold you like a little baby yeah. every now and then. You don't have to do that with horses, right? Or horse chiropractors. Yeah. Exactly. I've never. I was never able to hold a horse. <laughs> uh. Oh, love it. I love well, it. Uh, I'm a big fan of ghosts and I'm a big fan of the cow style boys. And I'm also a big fan of furnace fest. So like if we can bring all three of those things together, which furnace fest, uh, the sloss furnaces are supposedly very, very haunted. So hopefully we can get really? all three of those. Oh yeah. yeah, big time. So hopefully we can get all three of those. Maybe we can see like a ghost while you guys are playing at furnace fest. That would yes. be epic. Yeah. But we'll have them on. Well, they'll do a feature. They can come grab. The I don't mic. even necessarily want to see one. I want to hear one. There I we want, go. I want I'm to hear a little reader. Like, 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 a, like a plea yeah. for purgings ghost? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There we go. Just like a plea for purgings ghost. There we ghost. go. Wonderful. Hell yeah. Well, Maddie, thank yeah. you so much for chatting a little bit more about the history of the Cow Style Boys, what you're excited for about Furnace Fest, and then all the new stuff that we can potentially see or hear about in the future. We're really, really excited. So thank you so much yeah. for chatting a little bit more about it. Uh, again, Cow Style Boys, one of our favorite newer bands. <laughs> uh, and uh, we're just so, so, so excited for all the things that are happening for you all in the future. 
Big time. And tell Dan to piss off because he left us. I right. think he just tricked me. I think he didn't want to do it. Because he texted I me. think that was the case. Yeah, I think he just did it. I think well, hopefully, like... hopefully you can go back and say, actually, this was like a pretty fun time. Hopefully, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but hopefully it was fun enough for you to like, Dan, you really should have been there. Yeah, no, this was fun. This was like this was great. I no, because I was like, yeah, I'll do it, but I don't want to do it by myself. And I think he <laughs> this is probably his plan all along. He was just, I think it was. <laughs> just lured me in here that fucked off. Or he got in a car wreck, and in which case wow. I'm gonna have to call him and figure that out. Double, but yeah, you better double check. Well, Colin can play guitar, so if you need a yeah, nice. A <laughs> I'll hit you up. 